Hi everybody. Um, I was sitting this morning uh, having my tea and uh, uh, something dawned on me uh, that really hasn't dawned on me over the last uh, three or four years. And uh, I think it's extremely important that I touch on it. And uh, essentially what it is, um, I push very hard for dystonia awareness uh, during the month of September, but I'm also plugging away at ideas and whatnot throughout the year, uh, talking to individuals and and trying to help uh, patients, new patients, and uh, also looking for help myself because sometimes um, I'm in a position where I need assistance or I just want somebody to talk to to help me help guide me through um, a tough, tough patch. Um, but I guess doing all of this awareness, um, having the world's biggest fiddle lit up in blue, um, and, you know, getting monuments and buildings and landmarks lit up in blue, and uh, having people, you know, declare their support for Estonia awareness, um, I wanted to to kind of touch base on what does that do and how does that help. Uh, I think it's extremely important that we touch on that. And it's uh, a piece of the equation that I, I've i missed and haven't touched on. And I apologize for that. Um, so I guess um, I can use some examples Um to explain why it's extremely important, um, in addition to just basically uh, trying to explain it in uh, the best way I know how. Um, but I guess to start um, with, in talking to a lot of people, um, they experience similar situations and similar experiences, and they travel the same road when it comes to getting a diagnosis, uh, running into doctors who are unfamiliar with the disorder, um, and uh, being prescribed medications they shouldn't be prescribed uh, because they're essentially for other disorders or other ailments. Uh, and in fact, a study uh, that was just released from Dystonia Europe uh, states that roughly 16 percent uh i gotta verify that number but i'm pretty sure it's 16 percent of patients who took the study uh which were in the thousands um had said that uh, their doctor uh the general practitioner didn't know what dystonia was and they uh they did not and an even smaller percentage actually recommended they go see a movement disorder specialist or a neurologist and for me, that's just, that's like a mind blown moment when you, when you hear that and, um, that screams the need for awareness, um, to give a, uh, just a brief example, um, most restaurants you go into now, they have either a gluten-free menu or uh, you can order gluten-free items from the menu or their main menu will depict foods that you can get gluten-free versions of. And um, 10, 15 years ago, at least here locally, that was really unheard of. It was uh, it was extremely hard to get gluten-free meals in restaurants. And I remember one restaurant we went to and we ordered fish, but we explained that we needed it to be gluten-free, which meant that it, didn't, it couldn't have any sort of uh, breaded coating on it. So essentially what they did was they put the the skillet in into a frying pan and uh, there was nothing on it. And they just brought that out and slapped it on a plate and it just looked disgusting. It was really bad. Um, but uh, with celiac disease itself, which is, uh, which is uh, typically, it's a uh, severe allergen to uh, gluten. Um, so things such as rye, barley, wheat, um, 
that sort of thing um with our youngest like um when she was about two two and a half not to get into the full story but she i mean thankfully she was a, a good sized baby but um she ended up over the course of a number of months spending probably 70 percent of the time in the hospital being tested for all these sorts of things uh scary things too because uh, they couldn't figure what was wrong with her they didn't know what was wrong with her and uh they would uh bring her in for you know two weeks or so and um they'd uh they'd get her to a point where they felt she was okay and send her home and uh then within another week or so she's right back in the hospital with the same symptoms of the vomiting um all the typical um celiac symptoms that you would have but um, when we asked about being tested for celiac disease, and this is not a knock on doctors or anything like that there, this is just the way it was back then. Um, they either didn't know really what celiac disease was, or um, they just didn't feel that's what the issue was. So they continued testing her for um, everything from cystic fibrosis to uh, cancer to um, I mean, everything, you name it. Um, and it eventually got to a point where um, the damage from the gluten was becoming so uh, so ingrained in her and so bad that her organs were showing signs of distress. So finally, they agreed to send her to another hospital where she could get tested. And uh, lo and behold, um, you know, a half hour to an hour long uh, procedure and uh, they discovered that she did in fact have celiac disease and within two weeks of uh, not eating anything gluten she was a totally different child she uh, she started to come along in her speech and her walking her mobility um, she was a much happier child um, so I mean it's you know it's one of those things you know if they're not aware of it if you don't make them aware of it, then they don't do put the research into finding a treatment or uh, a cure or something that's going to work to to improve the health. And I mean, this was a two and a half year old child, um, and I mean, we were extremely worried about her. So, um, so I mean, that's just one example. But back to dystonia. Um, the reason awareness is so important is because most, and again, this is not a knock on doctors or or medical professionals in any way, but when you see stories and you read stories repeatedly of people who uh, who go in having an idea of what may be wrong with them, and uh, you know, even myself, like you know, you're when you're talking to doctors and you're you have a CD uh, showing episodes. You have the documentation um, and paperwork and notes. Um, you have a previous diagnosis that you have a form of dystonia. And uh, they won't call in a neurologist when you need help. And they, you know, they label you, they call you a, a, a drug addict saying you're suffering withdrawal symptoms. Um, on a separate occasion, I was called an alcoholic, um, and, uh, they told my wife that I was lying to her, that, uh, and I, I chuckle at this, it's, it's not a funny matter, but it's so absurd, it's hard to not, uh, it's hard to not laugh at it, it's so absurd, and, uh, and actually, in my case, um, the third attempt going to the ER, was actually by ambulance and it was actually the ambulance attendant uh thank god who uh sadly enough had seen enough uh patients who were in withdrawal or who were suffering with some form of addiction and he saw that this was different and he basically told me he said i will sit with you until they tell me that they are going to look after you and take care of you and uh you know Thankfully for him, if not for that, 
who knows how long it would have taken to, to get the proper care. But the whole awareness thing, um, by having um, all this talk of dystonia and monuments and buildings and landmarks lit up in blue, uh, businesses putting out displays, um, uh, municipalities uh, making official uh, proclamations uh, for dystonia, uh, and uh, you know interviews on the radio and like all these videos that are being posted by people um, you know showing support uh, from their caregivers from their friends from uh, medical professionals from anybody really um, if enough of that is done then hopefully and I pray to God enough doctors are going to see this enough medical practitioners are going to see this and say okay you know what I'm seeing this a lot I don't really know exactly what it is so I think I better up my game a little bit and do a little bit of research um, and maybe look at dystonia a little bit differently because um, historically dystonia um, the story was sort of discovered as an offshoot when uh, researchers were um, putting a lot of time and effort and money into researching Parkinson's disease. And they had these other disorders that they couldn't really trace um, to a particular reason or a cause. Uh, and they couldn't see anything in the brain with the technology at the time that was causing these issues. Um, at least that was my interpretation of what I've been reading. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But, um, so they had this grouping of items and they couldn't really explain it. And at the time it was, you know, not all doctors did this, not all researchers did this, but the easy thing to do at that time, we're talking late, 1800s maybe early 1800s the easy thing to do was to label it as some form of uh, uh, psychiatric issues like you know psychotic episodes or what have you um, even Sigmund Freud um, he chimed in himself on some of these disorders and uh, he labeled them as you know psycho somatic, um, psychogenic, and, uh, you know, when you have big names of well-respected figures like that, making those sort of claims and statements, it's hard to shake. Um, you might have a, a brilliant researcher who comes along after that and says, you know, we may want to look at this again, um, cause I don't think Sigmund Freud was correct. Um, I'm sure the you know, the scientific community is going to look at them and say, oh, you're going to argue with Sigmund Freud? Well, good luck with that. So, you know, and still now, like, it's, there's so, it, I mean, this is the 21st century, man. Like, um, we are still, when you go to see a neurologist and dystonia is a possibility, or if if they can't put it into, if they can't, see that it's either um, MS or Parkinson's disease, um, epilepsy, or that's anything else that they can directly kind of diagnose and see. Um, one of the immediate things that's done for patients is you're sent to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And you have to prove that you are not crazy and that you're not making this up. You literally have to prove that. And if you can't prove that, then you're stuck with the label that this is all in your head and this is made up. And that's not fair. That's not fair. And, you know, yes, there are, are probably people who, um, you know, yeah, maybe there are people who, it, maybe it is a psychosomatic thing. But to do that to everybody, really? It's the third most common movement disorder. And this is what you this is how you're treating people. So we need to change that. You know, we need to 
make as many people aware as possible so that finally researchers and doctors will start putting money and uh, start doing more research. There's research being done, but a lot of the research that I'm seeing, it's being done behind closed doors with the scientists. And we're not progressing the way Parkinson's is. And if you go to the Parkinson's website, one of the first things you'll see is a quote from Michael J. Fox himself. An absolutely lovely man. I would absolutely love to meet him. Just to talk to him and just to pick his brain and just, you know, have a heart to heart with him and just, you know, but... The quote essentially says that, you know, you have to listen to the patients. The patients know what they're feeling. The patients know what affects them the most. The patients know what helps them the most. So we need to listen to the patients and focus our research on what the patients are telling us. That is the way research should be done. It's not a top-down thing. It's not a, okay, well, let's try this on mice and see if this works. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Talk to the patients. There's so much out there. There's so many groups out there, people who are willing to share. I'll do it myself. I mean, I'll gather any information possible. But that's where we have to move. That's why awareness is so important. And I apologize to anybody who is getting annoyed with the blue and, um, you know, the talk of dystonia, um, you know, but it has to be done. It has to be done. And uh, hopefully enough awareness is going to lead to some research and some studies for doctors, for medical professionals and for scientists. Um, there'll be more money put into research and hopefully there'll be better treatments, something better than um, than drugs, something better than deep brain stimulation, something better than Botox injections. Uh, these are just things that you're just kicking the can down the road. Um, we need better treatments. We need better treatment for our patients. We need better... We need to work our way towards a cure. A cure may never come, but we need to work our way towards better treatments. Start with that. That's where we need to go. Um, Because I just imagine, you know, the parents of... uh, Imagine a six-year-old child, you know, who can't control her body. And she can't attend school. She can't play with her friends. She can't do the things that she loves. She can't ride a bike. She can't swim in a pool. You know, how would you feel if that was your child? You know, how would you feel if uh, you worked, you went all through school and all through university, you spent four or five years in university to get the job and the career that you loved. You worked hard to work your way up the corporate ladder and then bang in an instant. You can't do it anymore. You have to leave your job because you can't do it. You physically can't do it. Your body won't let you. You have no control of that. Imagine how that would feel. You can't drive. You can't golf. You know, as a as a mother, imagine watching your child go through that. Um As a grandparent, watch your grandchild go through that. Watching your adult child go through that. You know? I'm sorry this is so long, but I felt it was very important to to say this. And uh, I want to thank everybody. There's been so much support so far. Uh, We have a lot of things that will be uh, released over the next couple of days. And, um, you know, it's good things coming and, uh, things are looking up. It's positive. It's all good. And, uh, 
I hope you're all doing well. Uh, much love. And uh, keep up the support. We greatly appreciate it. And I will be sharing everything nationally and internationally as best I can with as many people as I can. Much love. Thank you very much.